The Maldive Islands, one of the world's most geographically dispersed countries, with around 400,000 inhabitants. of the Maldive Islands, the hidden part of life. The country is made up of 800 kilometer coral reefs spread out into the Indian Ocean near the Equator. The coral reefs are gathered in so-called atolls. Among the atolls there are about 1,200 coral islands. Due to their specificity, the Maldive Islands are not suitable for the development of diverse flora. Therefore, the island's flora mainly consists of coconut trees, a few fig trees, vines, banana trees and, of course, mangroves. Because the islands are very small, there are very few terrestrial mammals. There is a type of gecko here, and a certain species of agama lizard, which are very comfortable on the islands. The garden lizard, which is an agama lizard, is very common in the Maldives. It has a length that exceeds 10 centimeters. The total length of the tail can even be 37 centimeters. The lizard mainly feeds off of insects, small vertebrates, including rodents, and of course, other lizards. Although they have teeth, their role is to catch the victim and not chew it, so they completely swallow the prey. Sometimes, even the reptiles consume vegetal food. Their habitat is the forest, but they can also feel at ease near humans. The island's main growing crop is the coconut tree. 13, 15,000 tons of coconuts are produced annually, which they value in food, but they also export. On the island, you can find two types of coconut trees three year and six year old coconut trees. The six year one grows quickly and is fruitful only in the sixth year. Its fruits are green. The three-year one is small and can be harvested after just three years. The colors of the coconuts is a bright orange. The tallest coconut tree is almost 30 meters tall. The blossom grows at the base of the leaves and are pointed upwards. The long flowers of 1.2-1.8 cm of orange color are covered by light yellow sepals, flowers that from numerous garlands and at the base of which there are some flowers with pollen and stamen. Well-developed coconut trees annually produce 12 to 15 flowers. From one flower, 8 to 10 fruits are formed. Their weight is 1 to 2 kilos. These fruits are very important to the locals. Without them, there would be no economy. All the parts of the plants are valued. The body and the leaves are materials 
for construction. From the fibers, you can make rugs, ropes. From the woody material, decorative and household items are being sculpted. The coral reefs from the Indian Ocean represent the home for many ecosystems with a diversity starting from plankton to cetaceous and even sharks. In 1998, due to the phenomenon El Niño, the water temperature of the ocean rose with 5 degrees Celsius, which destroyed two-thirds of the coral reefs. This was a catastrophe. In order to resurrect the coral reefs, scientists placed electrified equipment at 20 to 60 feet below in order to ensure the sublayer, meaning a basic layer for gluing the coral larvae. According to research done by the specialists in 2004, the corals have regenerated. Before 1998, we never considered the fact that these corals might all of a sudden die. The population of the Maldives live on fishing. They had nothing but the water, but it always offered them from its riches. The new era brought with it tourism and stimulated the development of the Maldive Islands. Today, much of the population lives from tourism. Agriculture and the processing industry continue to play a secondary role in the economy, limited by the scarce terrain and lack of local labor force. At the same time, however, we also find natives who have their own fruit and vegetable crops. Of course, these things are hidden in the depths of the forests. Only 10% of the surface of the land can be cultivated. Millet, corn, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, pineapples, sugarcane, almonds and plenty of vegetables and tropical fruits grow successfully in the villagers' gardens. Abu Ahmed is tending to his plants with care. His household is not big, but it has room for melons, pumpkins and of course bananas. His personal favorite and that of the tourist is the papaya. At first sight, it looks like a yellow melon. When it's ripe, it has an orange color. The 20-30 cm fruits can be located in the upper part of the stalk under the wreath of leaves. A papaya fruit can weigh up to 5 kilos. Abu Ahmed proudly reveals his eggplant crop. It's true that he harvests this plant on just a small area of the land. The inhabitants of the Maldives are shy people, tolerant and, of course, respectful. In each movement of the elder man, you can feel the commitment and the devotion for his work. The Amorornis with the white chest. The Asian cuckoo. The Agama. They all are accustomed to the presence of man. They live together in a symbiosis, a symbiosis respected by all those involved in it.
Unlike the marine life where the coral species shine, the reef fish and the large fish, the dry wilderness life is sadly pretty rare. The Maldive Islands is one of the poorest developing countries in the world. They are threatened by global warming because the height compared to the sea level is very low. They must face the underqualified human resources and with the fast growth of the population. Despite this fact, the people that live here are very friendly, devoted and they're enjoying life even when their world is not as organized and as complex as it is in a well-developed country, such as the Western countries. The coral reefs from the Indian Ocean represent 20% of the total coral reef population in the world. The northern area is mostly rich in coral enterets and corals from the Anthrozoa species, which are building coral reefs and due to which we can rejoice seeing the colorful reefs of the ocean. And, of course, courtesy of these coral species, there is still hope for the regeneration of the bleached coral reefs. In the fight against bleaching and in order to protect the animals that live here, it is crucial that the presence of mankind produces very little chances and less damage. Those who live here try and preserve, as best as they can, the condition of coral reefs, this being the reason why touching the corals, the fish, the snails, the dolphins, the sharks and other marine creatures is not allowed. The annual growing rate of the population of the Maldives is nearly 3%. More than half of the population is under the age of 15. Improving the health services has diminished the infant mortality rate and the mortality rate in general. The life expectancy is 71 years. The burial rituals are influenced by the cultural traditions and the belief ones by costs and of course by personal preferences. Everyone's opinion about their death is respected. On Malos, the cemetery is simple. It is the holy place for honoring, respecting and commemorating the duly departed. Also here on the island, just like all over the country, the fish is the main source of proteins in the diet. Very little vegetables are consumed. Alcohol consumption is of course strictly forbidden. All the consumed fish comes from the local economy. The drinking water and the water for cooking are obtained from the precipitations. The basic food supplies, for instance rice, sugar, and flour are being important. The mayor's family is making soup today. Fish will also end up on the table. And there will also be desserts and chips. For the fish marinade, they are using chili, pepper, onions and the local green condiment and of course salt. Abdullah Shujao is the head of the family and mayor. He is making the fish. 
Today's catch is tuna and mackerel. He washes and cleans the fish with care so that the marinade covers the meat. In the meantime, the women are preparing the marinade and the soup and they are getting started on the sweets. After all, the ingredients ended up in the mixer. They add a few garlic gloves and a bit of water, after which they mix and they turn the mixture into a paste. All this while Abdullah guts the fish, so the flavors can really sink into the meat. Outside in the garden, the grandmother is working hard. She is preparing the so-called breadfruit. In the tropical area, these are a basic food. <laughs> They are made in two ways. They can be boiled, the taste resembles that of roasted chestnuts, or they can be cut into thin slices in order to fry them in oil and make chips. The final stage of preparing the fish is up next. They are placed on skewer sticks so they can be nicely fried on both sides. And the spicy marinade is ready. Under the soup and the dessert, the water is boiling. Sago is added into the water, which is very much like semolina when we make semolina with milk. Outside in the bowl, the breadfruits have also been prepared properly. They can slowly go into the oven. While the sago is boiling, the soup is getting ready. In the boiling water, the first pieces that end up are the sliced fish chunks. The whole family contributes to the preparation of the meal. The men deal with the fish. The women are in charge of the dessert and the soup, while the grandmother handles the snacks. Adding the spices requires a precise work, because they have to spread all over in order to achieve the perfect aromas. After the marinade ended up on the meat, the only thing missing is the fire. From the shell of the coconuts, you get coal for the fire as there are not that many trees on the island and the fire is being lit up in the house. The breadfruits are simmering here. They are perfect as a side dish and have a complementary food role. The sweets will also be ready soon. After the sagu doubles its volume, you add the pudding which they use in multiple flavors. After it came to a boil, the delicious dessert that resembles the semolina made with milk is ready. The soup also gets the required spices. They don't complicate it. Meat, spices and boiling. When the coals are ready, the fish can arrive, which will be on the table in less than 10 minutes. The dishes are ready. The family gathers and begins the normal everyday ceremony. For the people of the Maldive Islands, family is very important. Each stage of their life is planned 
and lived having in mind the best interests of the family. This is what the children learn from their parents and this is what they will pass on to their followers. They are very hospitable. There is no amount of food which they will not share with strangers passing by. They are very friendly. is situated at hundreds of kilometers from the large land areas which means the water is of excellent quality and of course that means a rich sea life. The Bar Atoll is a UNESCO reservation where a large variety of marine life is protected, among them 250 species of rock and soft corals and more than 1,000 species of reef fish, the hawksbill tortoise and the green tortoise, as well as the manta and the whale shark. A small island with 700 souls, there are just a few houses for lodging tourists, in which the locals also live. There are no cars, there are no people rushing to get to work, there are no beggars or aggressive merchants, nothing else than what is needed to rest, a sand as white as snow, water and nature. The spiritual reality that surrounds us here is remarkable. There is no sin concept here. There is no point in stealing. There is no place to run. The people are extremely religious. This pure atmosphere without sin is transmitted from the people here and it extracts the misery from the soul brought here from the developed civilization. It is a heavenly ambience both for the soul and the body. The nicest marine fish tank to be set up. The greatest artist created it so that people can admire its beauty. The fish are not disturbed by shops or by people. The sediments allow you to look at them. A forest or a meadow can be pretty, but nothing compares to the richness and wild beauty of a jungle. This is approximately the difference between the creatures of ordinary beaches and those from the Indian Ocean. Beauty is present in such a large quantity that it's pointless and meaningless to try and explain it more than that. Narrator Adrian Dima